This episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast is brought to you by Nomadicare. Now, personally, I love Nomadicare. I've used Nomadicare, and I recommend the company to all new travelers. What Nomadicare does is it takes the fear out of getting set up with a bad recruiter, which is the biggest fear that you have jumping into this journey. So they sit down, they interview recruiters, they vet them, get them on a list, and then provide them to you as a free service, as a free recruiter matchmaking service in order to get you started on your journey. Now, usually you only get two recruiters going through Nomadicare, but being a listener of the show, you can get three. So this is how it's going to work. You go to nomadicare.com slash Dylan. You will get set up with three recruiters to be on your dream team, as well as a guide to get you started on your journey. Hey, Nomads. This is Dylan coming at you from Silicon Valley. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast. My name is Dr. Dylan Cowyer. I am your host. Today, we are talking about habits. Um, This is a follow-up to the the podcast I just recorded about goals and about the means to acquire those goals and not getting stuck in the means. And so if you haven't listened to that one, I highly, highly suggest that you go back, listen to that one, figure out what your goals are, because this is going to feed forward from that conversation. So if you did what you were told, (laughs) if you did what... um, we talked about in the last podcast and the last show. First of all, thank you very much for being a uh, listener of the show and a supporter. I highly, highly, highly care about you guys so much and uh, want to make sure that I give you the most value and um, the best information about travel and not just the nitty gritty stuff, but this, o- these overarching themes um, about how to be a, you know, a better person, a better practitioner, a better uh, just traveler, human being. Um, so <laughs> a little rant, but Going back to your goals, if you have your goals figured out, habits often can make or break a goal. And it's usually the little habits that we don't realize that we're doing. Um, So just a, and this is, I, I very, I very much enjoy books and podcasts on psychology. And so this is just a summary of most of the books that I've listened to about building habits, being a physical therapist, trying to um, coax patients to do their exercises. A lot of times it's, it's, it's about building the habit um, and not so much giving them the most um, awesome regimen because if it's 15 exercises and it takes them an hour to do them every day and I'm asking them to do them twice a day, they're not going to do it. And so it's more about building a habit. Hey, when you wake up, I want you to do this exercise, this one exercise. And then once they build the habit, now we have a foundation we can move forward. Um, So a lot of this is on human psychology, but habits are hard to break, easy to make. For the most part, there are (laughs) some conscious habits um, like eating correctly, um, things that takes a um, conscious effort that are are hard to develop. Habits usually can be reset after a life-changing event. Now, one of those examples, my father uh, used to smoke for a very long time. Um, He was able to quit smoking. He had tried several times, but he had tried the the patches, the gum, and none of it was working um, until he got cornered by a physician and said, hey, Physician said, you have to pick two things. Either you quit drinking or you quit smoking, which is it going to be because right now your health is going down and you're going to have to stop one of them in order to survive. That is a life-changing event, a <laughs> life-changing conversation um, for a man that has a, a, a three-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. Um, and he was able to quit cold turkey without gum, without patches, without anything. I hadn't touched him. And Dutch and sense. Habits are able to be broken or made with life changing um, events more easily. When you move to a new place, you're basically hitting the reset button. So, for those already on the road, if you're wanderlusting right now, this is something to be aware of for that first contract. When you go out, 
into a new location, everything you do becomes conscious. You're no longer able to drive home without thinking about it. You have to either plug it in your phone, follow along for the first few weeks until you get it down. And then um, it's still not muscle memory yet. So, you know, once a week you'd make a wrong turn or something like that. And <laughs> it, it's very conscious for you to get back home. Um, it's very conscious for you to go to a new grocery store. If you go from Missouri to California or from the Midwest to California or from California all the way to New York, the grocery stores are going to be different. Unless you go to a Target or Walmart, um, they're probably not going to be set up the same. And so you are going to have to go down every aisle to find the dang thing that you need, which is usually if you're in Target all the way at the end, <laughs> you have to walk the entire length of the store just to find the one thing you want. Um, coming from an individual that uh, has a, has a love hate relationship with Target. But everything be becomes conscious. So every time that we move to a new contract, to a new location, um, that's a life changing event. That is the best time for you to decide, hey, this habit that I have, I'm going to break it. Or this habit that I um, want to make, I'm going to create it. Those are the easiest times in order to make or break habits. Um, some psychologists will disagree saying you can't actually make a habit. You have to change a habit. So you either take a habit and you replace it with something else, um, whichever works best for you. Um, that's about a 50-50 debate. So... When you go to a new area, focusing on the little habits and you want to make sure that these habits align with your goals. There are some generally overarching goals that we all want and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But if you have a very specific goal, owning a clinic, um, being debt free, um, anything else revolving monetary, um, starting a family, goals are going to be very different. You want to make sure those habits reflect that. Confession time for me. Since I've been traveling, um, my consistency with working out, even as a physical therapist, has not been the best. <laughs> um, for the past three, four months, this has been the least amount that I've ever worked out since I was 16, year old, 16 years old in high school. <clears throat> health is something I consider as a non-negotiable and lately I've been letting my health become a negotiable. One of the things I used to think is every time that I stop and do my workout, I'm investing in my health and that's worth a million dollars. That workout is worth a million bucks uh, for me to stop, um, go to the gym, do an hour workout. Now finding a gym on the road has been very hard for me and very hard for me in that it also aligns with my financial goals with my financial goals unfortunately I don't enjoy running as much as I do picking up really heavy stuff um, so I've been dabbling with more body weight stuff finding things on YouTube but when I came to this location I said this is no longer going to be a non-negotiable or sorry this workout routine that I used to have every single day is going to become a non-negotiable again. Right now, it was a negotiable. Now, I am working out every single day. Even as for 15 to 30 minutes, um, that, that workout is worth a million dollars. One quote that really sticks with me is, often people will trade their health for their wealth in their early life, and then for the rest of their life, trade their wealth for their health. I think that was Gandhi. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to put it on the show notes. <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't want to fall into those, into those mistakes. And being healthcare workers, we get to see the impacts of those individuals who were sedentary for so very long that decided to come home from work, plop on the couch, watch TV, or watching TV. They have potato chips every time they watch TV. And it feeds forward into these other habits. Um, eating healthy. This is a great time for those individuals who are trying to eat healthier or eat less um, or just being more, more food aware. So when you go to a new location, be aware that the first place that you go to eat, you will most likely return to. 
it's usually somewhere nearby this quick because you're unpacking, you're trying to get ready for the, the next contract. But if you have the choice between a fast food burger joint and um, some place with like salad and bowls in the name of it, go to the salad and bowls one, order something. You're going to go there, you're going to eat, you're going to be more likely to return to the healthier option than that other food place. If you make it a goal to never go to that food place, that's amazing because then your alternative is going to be that, that salad and bowls place. So being aware that the early on within the contract that you start, that is where you're going to have that habit throughout the entire contract. If you're trying to save money, going to um, out to eat every night is not going to be very nice on your pocketbook. So figuring out the local grocery store, the cheaper grocery store, not that one that um, overcharges, and you go to this one um, and there's not a membership card associated with it, you just buy it, that's going to set you up for success that entire 13 weeks. Again, it's the little habits that, that really reflect the goals. So going back to your goals, there's something called the compound effect. Now, most of us are very familiar with compounding interest. When you invest in something, eventually the interest grows so much that it almost kind of reinvests in itself and then it compounds and it grows quicker. So in the example I gave of the gentleman that comes home from work, he's tired, plops down, watches TV, eats potato chips because he's watching TV, um, isn't nearly as hungry, so he starts uh, putting on weight. He's losing energy. Um, because of that, he's more irritable. Now him and his wife are having more um, complications and fights throughout the marriage. And it's, it just kind of feeds into itself. If he was able to, instead of sit down and watch TV, and he, he would be able to break that cycle. So instead of sitting down and watching TV, maybe he reads a book on personal health, on something that he's very, um, very excited to learn. Now he's learning. Now he's reading, preferably not in the same spot as the couch that he was sitting on to watch TV. Um, if he's reading, most likely he's not going to feel the need for those potato chips. Then he's going to start losing weight. Then he's going to have better energy. Maybe he starts working out again. Um, and then, you know, he feels better. So that negative energy isn't going towards his wife and now they are doing better overall. That's an example of compound, compounding um, effect, compound effect. The compound effect is actually a book, um, highly recommend it. I will also put that down in the show notes. Um, but talking about little habits and how they feed forward into really big return on investments or return on losses. One of the better habits that I heard of was a man that was looking to <clears throat> improve his marriage, improve the passion of his love for his wife. And so instead of when, them, when they would put the kids to sleep, put the kids to bed at night, they would usually go into their room, turn on the TV, fall asleep, not have any conversation. And um, he, it wasn't settling well with the two of them. So he then decided after they would put the kids to bed that he would put a pot of tea on the stove and he would make tea. And then him and his wife would have tea time after they put the kids to bed. So they could put the kids to bed, 8.39, um, immediately he puts on the, the tea, the tea kettle on the stove. They sit down and for half an hour they drink tea and they enjoy each other and they have conversations and they talk about the day and they talk about their kids and everything else. And that one stuck with me, just something really unique that I hadn't heard of before <clears throat> that would obviously, obviously have a huge impact on their marriage. And so that, that was their goal, to improve their marriage, to improve their passion, to improve their love for each other. Now they're working on their communication. 
if more um, tough challenges come down the road, they know how to communicate better with each other. They're making a tough decision. Now they know how to communicate each, each other side with one another. And uh, they feel heard. And they're having an active listener. Their partner is now their active listener. And they get to the vent about the day if they so need it or talk about um, what they really want um, within the next few months or what they would like to do for vacation next year. Um, and, and just get to enjoy each other. And so that, that one kind of hit me in the feels and I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the tea time habit, but that is today's actionable, um, takeaway. It's once you know your goals, try and develop a habit that's going to allow you to accomplish those goals. If it's going back to the, the traveling nurse that wants to see the world, um, sitting down following a YouTube channel that shows you all the different parts of the world that you can go to finding out which ones that you want that you would like to go to um, and then making sure that you're not <clears throat> falling into getting stuck on the means in order to acquire that goal because there are persons out there that will plan for a trip much longer than they actually get to enjoy that trip I'm not talking about the length of time for planning, like in 2018, you plan for a big trip in 2019, but actually physically sitting down at a desk, doing all your research, and then the actual research for the trip takes longer and more time than actually going on the trip and enjoying the trip, or takes away from the trip, because now you got this big old plan schedule to uh, go elsewhere, and um, you don't get to enjoy it. So that would be another example of falling into the means of the actual goal. But finding out those habits, if you are trying to pay off student debt, being more financial savvy, listening to podcasts on student debt, on finances, on investments. If you're wanting to open up your own business down the road, uh, coming back, reading books on business, reading books on marketing, little habits that you can start doing that will have a compound effect and ultimately help you reach your goals. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, thanks again so much for listening. If you're looking for the new Medical Nomads podcast uh, official launches, you can find them on the New Medical Nomads podcast Facebook page. If you have any questions for myself, habits, goals, um, getting stuck on means, uh, you can go to New Medical Nomads Facebook group and of course, any likes, shares, comments, heart symbols, smiley faces, uh, whatever you want to put, uh, the more engagement this gets, the more people that can see it, listen to it, benefit from it, which is ultimately the goal of this podcast. So thank you so much. And everybody, think about the small habits. Think about the little ones that will have a big compound effect, um, things that you can change, habits that you can break. And nomads, you all have safe travels.